Well, I am very, very excited about our conversation. <laughs> I know this is not going to be the end uh-huh. because, again, the knowledge that you have in the industry mm-hmm. and how much contribution you have already made in the industry and you can, will continue to. So this is not going to end. <laughs> you touched on a topic that is kind of passionate about and it's the, the health of the environment in which we do business. Mm-hmm. construction mm-hmm. and sometimes can be very very toxic i would say more than than what it should be. right and and the stress that that creates it's not suffered by one person it's everyone no, right the whole company even right. if the contracts the legal side of it could have been created by one party but everyone suffers that right and you know like the building gets done but nobody really knows what happens behind closed doors, right? right? What happens inside the walls of a building. And so you've been talking about contract terminology. You've been talking about changes. How do we bring out the conversation? How can we make our industry better? I don't really like to complain, and I know you don't either. No. But I don't no. also, be, I believe we don't do any service by staying on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. and not bringing this ball forward, right? right? So mm-hmm. how, what can we do? What do you see? How do you see it? So my, my input to that uh, and response to that is going to be that let's just start with having a dialogue, a healthy dialogue where industry and the government are sitting together at the same table with the same goal that let's how we can all improve. And taking that those suggestions in the dialogue and actually implementing it not just having a dialogue and doing nothing with right. it. Right. Such as, I mean, the you know, there are a lot of good, hardworking small companies. They don't have the resources to go and 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 pursue their principles. We don't want to have a small businesses suffer through those. In order for them to prove their principle, they will be out of business. So, so what you mean them. by that, just to be clear, I mean I hear you and I have gone through a situation like that. I had back in twenty thirteen I had gone through a process and I have done the work and I was entitled to additional funds because everything changed. I was mm-hmm. delayed and so on and so forth. And we were still, you know, in, in a financial crisis. It wasn't, it was 2013 or actually 2012. So I said, I have to do something because it, this is the principle, you know, it's integrity. Right. I did my work. I need to get paid. Right. And and everyone, my accountant, are you crazy? You're going to lose everything. Mm-hmm. You're going to go after this company. This was a large company. Right. And I went to the government. They're supposed to protect the small businesses. There was supposed to be, you know, uh, an initiative for small businesses. Mm-hmm. Nobody would do it. And so I said to me, the principle matters. Yes. Right. And this is like laying on US one. Mm-hmm. This is how I saw it. And just let everyone go over right. me, over me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it wasn't about arrogance. It mm-hmm. was about the right thing, courage, I guess. But literally, this could have wiped us out mm-hmm. had we not won that case. Right. In another situation, it hasn't been like that. Right. And and it's very painful. Yes, yes. it is. It, it is. is. And I agree with you and share the same sentiments where... I said that small businesses cannot prove their principles, right. even though principally they are probably right. Government comes back to them with all the resources, endless resources, right. and they put them out of business. Right. I mean, you know, there getting, are they're, contract they're, articles I mean, that I can point out that are very unfair. I mean, like number one, example. yes, for example, I'll give you a few of them. Number one, for example, delay for them. No delay for damage. I mean, no damages for delay. Which there, means that. Which means that if there is a delay in a project and the contractor spends the resources for whatever, whether it is an error or omissions on the architect's part or on the owner's side, they spend resources, real resources. There are damages, but the government denies those right off the bat. They say, no, there is a contract article that you have signed for it. That article needs to be revisited. Some agencies like federal are very understandable and then they do actually award damages for delay, but local governments not. Right. They're living in some cloud that I don't know who came up with this article. Right. Number two, when there is an error and omission and it creates a change order, the client goes to the architect and say, you decide on it. Well, the errors are made by them to begin with. Uh, imagine who in the right mind, a party who has made the error, is going to accept the responsibility. Yeah. They never do that. Right, and say, hey, That's contractor, you made a There's mistake. There's a conflict of interest right there. Right. 
So that happens a lot. It right. happens a lot. Right. And, then, and then there's a fight. And mm -hmm. the contractor is, has a contract that says, unless you have an approved change order, you cannot, you won't, you won't get paid. Right. right. So the contractor is waiting for an approval. The architect is supposed to be, do a redesign, but the architect doesn't want to approve right. the order. And sometimes they don't want to do the redesign. The redesign because right. that's very proof right. proves that they don't. Right. So they, the owner says like, I don't know how you say that in English. Uh, leave their hands like yeah, Ponce Pilato, problem. you know. <laughs> uh, have it's you said that in English? I don't know. It's yeah. not. It's uh, not their problem. And right. hey, you guys figure it out. But at the same time, they tell the contractor you're delayed. Right. Yeah. But we can't get inspected because we don't have a revised drawing, so we're stuck. And then, then number three, that I would say that there is a article that addresses construction change directive. Construction change directive is basically telling you that, okay, I owe you. Not necessarily that I'm going to pay you, just I owe you. Okay. And then you have to fund the job. So all the contractors, including the subcontractors, who could be small, could be large, whatever, they're funding the job. And this takes on for a couple of years. Right. By that time, those small contractors are, are practically gone. put out of business. The construction change directive never funds the job as it is being executed. So that has to be looked at. Mm -hmm. It should be funded during the during while the work is going on. Right. That doesn't happen. Yeah. And then, then the government should hire qualified individuals to manage the job. They should hire not only their own staff, but even the architect. The architects, a lot of the time, almost always, I hate to say that almost always, but they're getting a free ride. They are on the job easily one, two, three years before, but they do not produce a quality product, quality drawings. They establish this relationship with the client's staff and they overlook it. And then contractor is given these documents to provide a proposal within 30 days. Right. Quickly. Quickly. And perfectly, whereas the architect was there for two, three years. What did he do? He didn't do not well, a good not job. Enough. I have gone on the jobs. Within one week, I've gone back to the client and said, by the way, the architect has completely missed the vote. He's mm -hmm. in a different world. What did he design? And the client is like, you know, clueless. What, what, what is going on? In one week, I've told them myself. But nobody makes a decision so many times. And, mm -hmm. I, and I have to tell you, when you say more qualified people, in construction. Right. Uh, one of the things I like, I have to tell you, it's much better to deal with people that are qualified, even if they are going to make you accountable. Of course. Because you're mm -hmm. really not arguing about nonsense. Right, right, and right. And if you're doing your part, right. you know, you're getting paid. Right. right. And if you're following right. the rules right. and the rules are not changing mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. that right. happens too. And so, you know, I have to tell you, I cannot tell you enough about the Army Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to get in. Very point of entry is, is tough mm -hmm. because it's more value over price. And, and they are looking for changes. It, it's, also, it's also about attitude. And uh, they go into industry. I, I interviewed someone at the Army Corps of Engineers, and they look all the time for industry. They ask industry, how can we be better? Right. And that's how you co elevate Excellent. Right. Excellent. As, a, as a group. So mm -hmm. I, I would love to be able to talk to our government entities mm -hmm. and, and see how can we bring a perspective, not from criticism, but mm -hmm. more how do we learn? How do we make how it we better? Each other how, how we can better. Yeah. How we can help each other out. How we can make a better, a good change in the system, right. which could address these, these issues that are affecting everybody. Right. These are our problems, meaning our, meaning them and us. Right. And this perception that the contractor is always the bad guy. I mean, I don't feel like a bad person. I am working my butt off to produce a quality uh, end product to finish and to provide the owner a solution. Yes, I, we have to make a profit because we have to make a living. Just like the government uh, employees get their paycheck every week. We, have, we also need a paycheck every week to sustain our families. So th this perception that the contractor is always the bad guy, th that has to kind of go away because we're not the bad guy. I mean, th there are conflicts of interest in, in the industry itself that need to be fixed. And because we put in a claim, it doesn't mean we're the bad guy. We, we, we are fighting for justice. We are fighting for, for fairness. But it looks like because we put in a claim, we're the bad guys. 
No, we're not the bad guys. Look, you know, take me and Naeem. We're normal human beings trying to raise a family decently, you know, providing our children education, just like everybody else. And our employees. And our employees live off of what we can bring into the company. So we feel we're responsible for their livelihood. It's not like when we don't get paid, oh, you're not going to get a, a paycheck this week. I mean, who, who would survive on that basis? Nobody, yeah. right? How has this industry transformed? When 30 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, we, we evolve and change. And these challenges, obviously, challenges are an opportunity for growth mm -hmm. and, and, and evolve. Who has this industry made of you both in terms of character, in terms of your own soul? How do you cope with situations where that are unfair, that mm -hmm. you don't really have a level of control? But you still need to raise your family, yourself. You don't want to go to a psychiatric institution. <laughs> the industry is uh -huh. highest rate in suicide, mm -hmm. a second highest rate. That means there's a lot of stress. It, mm -hmm. People don't talk about it. I learned about this, I don't know, three years ago. Mm -hmm. So we, you, I don't think you knew about it. Or you might have. Have you heard, of, have you heard this industry? No. Uh, industry is no, second I, highest I, along with mine. I know that it's very stressful, certainly. So... Statistically, we're second highest along with mine. So it, there's a lot of stress here and everyone suffers it from mm. the government side, from architecture, from engineering, from construction, the labor. Mm. Everyone is affected. What, what, what would you... Well, we, we have certainly grown with the industry. Over the 32 years that we have been in business and really over 39 years that I've been in this industry, not every client is unfair also. So there are some good clients, but very few. Most of them really are, are I think, uh, you, I would say that they don't mean to be unfair, but it ends up to be unfair. There is a sense of achievement that we do feel when we you know, finish a job. And I think that's what keeps us uh, involved, that keeps us going in this. And, and then uh, feel good when we are returning something back to the community. You know, recently, as I was, we were talking about earlier, we have started to give out uh, scholarships, a full you know, full ride scholarships to the students in construction, in construction management, management. Yes. So, which is, I hope is going to make difference. It's just going to bring in some good, you know, uh, people here and good vibe in this industry. And I would uh, say that, you know, some of these suggestions that we have made, I've shared them with my fellow businessmen who are in this industry, and they're all on board to have that dialogue. I would encourage the government to open their minds and in their doors to have the dialogue with a good spirit, with a good goal to 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 have set goals in that regard. And, uh, and I'll add, I'll add by saying that being persistent, not being afraid, not being shy, it takes 30 years to to grow out of that shyness. You know, uh, you always think of the government as as like this big type of monster, almost like. But yeah, they're unapproachable. They're untouchable. There's people. But, but they're regular people. So I think being persistent, I've learned that being persistent to, to fight for your fairness is, is very important. I don't give up. I, I won't give up being persistent. What, when, you, when, you, when you're looking for to preserve a principle. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to end with, uh, first of all, congratulations for always, even though through the challenges, you, you have a spirit of giving back. Mm -hmm. I know you. We've We've seen each other in FIU, just seeing how can we make a difference. At the end of the day, you have, we have all these challenges, but we still have to find a way to give back and, and lift the industry from our own perspective and mm -hmm. the world, right? It, it, we do what we can, but we want to do more. Right. And I really think we're in a, living exciting times. There's this is a moment of, of opportunity and change. You know, I know many companies, they are going through through the pain of not getting paid, but they don't say anything. Mm -hmm. they, they almost want to show that everything is great, perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and instead, we can look at this as an opportunity to see what's not working, mm -hmm. and and let's take that into an, a, a different level. Right. Right. Yes, there is there is a good good lesson to be learned from the disagreement, or from the losses, or from the disappointment. Uh, to share those things. Uh, and, and I think there's a lesson to be learned in that, in those type of experiences. So I would encourage that whether you are a small or large or medium-sized company, 
share those experiences. Don't hide behind them and don't feel bad about talking about them. Uh, because at the end of the day, you might help somebody to really avoid those type of experience. Right. So we can make a, make a difference. And I know I agree with you. I don't think any government employee or any architect, anybody is really willingly trying to make impact. But one last question with regards to women. <laughs> We're in the Women's Week, Construction Week, uh, AGC called it. And, right. you know, traditional international Women's Day just passed. Oh, that's March, right. March yes. Yeah. So what's your perspective as to women in our industry, whether it's engineering, uh, architecture, or construction, back when you decided to join this school, and how did you see it right. also back then? And now, how can we bring more women, or do you think it's favorable to have more diversity and inclusion in, in our industry? It's absolutely, absolutely very important. I mean, I we are a great benefiter of this. I mean, Grace being... The president of the company and and, and uh, you know <laughs> educated licensed and all of that and actively I would encourage women to participate right. to come in this industry. It is not just about going out there and, and and painting a wall or anything like that. If they want to do that, that's fine. That could be done too. But this industry offers a great potential. People can make very good living. They could have a fantastic family life. They could have a fantastic career. And then success is is. Boundless. I yeah, your think. potential is limited. Yeah, you, you, you could only, it depends only on your own dreams, really. I mean, I have a daughter of my own, and I will welcome her any day. She wants to come to the company or learn <laughs> about it. So I would say that, yes, this is an exciting industry to be in. And what do you think would be an exit strategy for you guys? I mean, that's a tough <laughs> question, but I want to put it out there. Not that you're planning on retiring. I know that's not yeah. something that I would even recommend because... Mm. You know, there's a statistics that when male retire uh, mm -hmm. in five years, they could be out of gone. <laughs> retire <laughs> from Earth. <laughs> no, 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 no. Keep working. Change, change the residency. I keep change working. The different residency. Right, right. <laughs> change the residency. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. I, how do you see an exit strategy? And I ask this question not because I'm, you know, so much I'm interested in only in your your story, but mm -hmm. more to open that question to people that start a company. You know, mm -hmm. we also, our extra strategy right. is to make our company employee-owned. Right. And there's a whole process for that. You yeah. can speak to that, but to get there, right. there's a huge stuff. It's not only what has to happen administratively, right. but there's a lot that we have to change that we have to absorb and, and change our identity and right. et cetera. So well, how do you see exiting this industry? Not by surprise, but by design. <laughs> yes, yes. So in my calculation, I think I have about 30 years left. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's not worried about his exit strategy. <laughs> but you know what? So many, there's a lot of changes in technology. So right, technology right. is affecting how long we're going to be living. So. You yeah. Know, if we manage yeah. to stay alive in the next eight years, we can be here for a long time. Right. So that's a hundred years and, and in a good shape. Right. 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 Thirty will put me into nineties. So. Oh, right. All right. <laughs> I gotta make yeah. sure I eat properly now. <laughs> yeah. There are so many uh, options out there for the exit plan that everybody should think about sooner than later. Because uh, God forbid you you could get killed crossing a street. Employee owned option is certainly a good one. Somebody in the family or some you know, somebody wants to, uh, you know, take over or whatever, which is perfect. I mean, you know, as long as the goals and, and, and the uh, principles of the company that uh, we founded the company on are, are carried over, it would be good to see. Uh, and and, and I would recommend that every company, ha I don't know if they do, but if they don't know about insurances that could help you in case, God forbid, uh, there's a mishap and, and say I die or he dies. There, there is insurances to help the company over a certain period of time to carry on or hire somebody else to come in to take over those same responsibilities. I mean, that's a very short term type of thing, but it's still a strategy that you that every company in construction should have. Uh, Key so, money insurance. Right. Yeah. Right. But having a plan is better than having no plan. Hopefully we both don't die at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be coming in different cars next time. <laughs> she, she, she's having a. That was that was uh, not funny. I, I, I was I was getting killed. <laughs> no, actually, 
I, I did, by the way, I made up an emergency contact list of, of everything I could think of for our, it, because we fly, we, we, we often fly together. So one of my sec my employees, my secretary says, Grace, have you ever thought like what if what if something happens to you guys and you guys don't come back? So I said, you know that that is something to think about. So I did de develop a list <laughs> and I and, and I gave it to my secretary and I gave it to our senior PM and I said, listen, if this happens, these are the people you need to call. <laughs> so <laughs> that was just something out there i mean it does cross our mind oh yeah thank you so much for for coming again this thank has you been so much fun. for inviting us yeah this was and fun we, i hope we can continue this dialogue yes I, yeah i agree we're gonna do a forum uh -huh. and we're gonna invite different people from the industry to see how can we make it better how do we add value and how do we uplift our industry co-elevate together yeah of course That's yes really i would be happy idea. to be thank you for so much for your efforts Yes, yeah, maybe we'll do that live and we can do that live. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's all for making good change. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Leaving the industry in a better place. Yes. Right. Yes, right. exactly. That's true. Well, thank good. you to our listeners. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and our team and, and, and everyone that contributed to, to this episode. And I will encourage them to look at our video that is on the YouTube. Just type in Grace and Lane with an ink and uh, you will learn something more about us. Yes, what's your what's your social media? The, uh, in the YouTube, we have a, a video that is, we made. It's a very short video, introduction or something. It's Grace and Lane. Grace right. and Lane with an ink, yes. We're going to put it in the, so that they know how to type it. Thank you for listening to Thriving in Construction, the podcast with Patricia Bonilla. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like to help support the podcast, please share it with others and leave a rating or review on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. If you have any suggestions or any related topics you would like us to tackle in our future episodes, feel free to reach Patricia by sending her a message through the website anchor.fm slash thriving in construction or find her on LinkedIn. Thanks again and we'll see you next week here in Thriving in Construction, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs>